Hey guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use ChatGPT to draw a tree using Python Pygame library. Now, this is me writing the same program generated by ChatGPT in VS Code to generate multiple trees. And this was done without even understanding how Python works. All of the code was written by ChatGPT. And here's another game I also made in under 20 minutes using ChatGPT with VS Code. It had keyboard controls and it even has sound. Okay, let's get started. First, I'm going to go to File, Open Folder. I'm going to navigate to my C drive, go to my Projects folder. And here in Projects, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it Tree. Now, create the folder, select it, and click on Select Folder button. This will create a new Python project. Now I'm going to create a new file. Right click, new file, tree.py. It's just a blank file for now. Now we're going to use a ChatGPT extension called Genie AI. So go to extensions, start typing Genie AI. I already have it installed, but all you have to do is just find it and click on the install button here. Now eventually, the first time you use it, it's going to ask you for your OpenAI key. I already added it and I've already shown how to do that in my previous tutorial. With Genie AI installed, just type some code like import py, right click and go to Genie explain. ChatGPT will start explaining this code selection you've just made. Now here it's going to tell us what py game is and it's going to say it has ability to create game graphics, handles user input, mouse and keyboard, manages sound and music, collision detection, and has built-in support for sprites. Now, this is the important part. We're going to type our request into this input box. I'm going to say, write a function that displays a 100 by 100 cell grid, make each cell two pixels in the width and height, draw random pixels in it, make pixel colors, red, orange, and blue display in a Pi game window. Okay. And just press send button. Chat GPT will start creating this initial game window. Once it's done writing the code, select everything in the right hand side the file, delete it, and just click on the insert button here. Now that's going to copy our GPT generated code into our actual program. Now on top of VS code window, go to terminal, new terminal and type py tree.py. Now I didn't ask GPT to actually animate pixels, but because it's a game library, it assumed that there's a game loop. Okay. So we're going to close this window, select entire code base, in this file, right click and go to the option saying Genie ad hoc prompt. And this means that we're going to give GPT this selected code and also tell it what to do with it. Okay. I'm going to type remove drawing pixels and draw only one pixel in the middle of the screen. Now, once GPT creates this new code, Simply delete everything from the file again. I'm going to cut it and here I'm going to click the insert button. Now run the program again and you'll see in the middle of the window, we now have a red pixel. Now let's go ahead and close this. Now select this code, right click genie ad hoc, and we're going to type another message, create a function that draws a tree on the pixel grid. It starts at the bottom in the middle and as it grows upward, it adds branches to the tree, expanding up in a natural tree branch pattern. Use white pixels. Submit that and wait for GPT to write code. Now delete everything from the file, go to the code and click insert and run this from the terminal. Now it's drawing the tree, but we're missing some branches. So I'm going to close this window again, select the code on the right again, 
right click it, go to Genie ad hoc, and let's type another instruction. Here I'm going to say modify this code as follows. As the tree grows up, it also adds branches. Create a new branch class and use it to add branches to the growing tree. Let's introduce the branch class with its own grow method, which will represent the behavior of a single branch. The tree itself will consist of multiple branches. Now the GPT is going to write the code again. So we're going to delete our source code in the file and go to insert button again. Now run this program from the terminal. Now we don't see any branches. So we need to continue repeating this process, telling ChatGPT what to do next. So here I went straight into the lower left corner input box and typed. It still looks like one branch, add multiple branches to the tree as it grows. And now this is important. Each branch is independent of the tree or other branches. Each branch can grow its own branches too on the tree. Now, at this point, the ChatGPT started producing code that crashed my window. So my prompts started to be more about debugging the code. Here I told ChatGPT, this program crashes because it draws too many branches. Change it to draw less branches. Here ChatGPT created a new function for me. At this point, I was able to draw multiple branches. But the problem was that they all started at the bottom of the screen and not from other branches. Now, I kept going through this write and rewrite code process all over again. I wrote prompt that told ChatGPT to create a branch that looks like a pine tree. I asked it to use a less branches. Then I ran into several cases where it crashed my program again about three to four times until I gave up. But as I progressed through these prompts, I noticed something interesting, and that is that I was actually learning many new things about drawing trees using the Pygame library. But because almost every single time I tried to run it again, my window crashed, I finally decided to do something else. I took everything that I learned from this process. I deleted all of my files and the source code. And knowing what I know now, I gave ChatGPT this one large prompt. Write a one file Python script using Pygame module. Create a 50 by 100 grid where each cell is two pixels. Clear the background of the grid to black pixels. Create two classes, tree and branch. Branch class can grow branches on itself. Tree class will initialize 50 branches, create a function, create a tree, and use it to initialize tree. Object, make the tree grow starting from the bottom of the screen in the middle. Use white pixels, grow the tree up, use branches to draw new branches as the tree grows, adding each branch either on the tree itself or on another branch. Maximum 50 branches. Make branches in the pattern of a pine tree. Make the tree look natural. Now, after all this code was generated and I copied it into the file and ran it from the terminal again, I ended up with this result. It's doing exactly what I asked, except there's a problem. The branches are too small to see the tree. So I selected the code again, right click, Genie ad hoc, and I asked this one last thing. Make branches longer, about or between 10 to 50 pixels. Now GPT wrote this code and produced this new result. I ran the program again, and this was my result where branches still grew from the middle of the screen and not from the branches themselves. Now I selected the code, right click, ad hoc, and the final instruction was make branches stem from the branches themselves, not just the bottom middle of the screen. Okay, and ChatGPT once again generated this 
code. I copied it from the left hand side into the file again using the insert button. Okay, and I ran the program from terminal again. Finally, at this time the tree was generated correctly. And so in this tutorial, I showed you an example of how to use ChatGPT to write code. As you can see, it's not easy, but you'll definitely learn a lot about coding in the process. Just try to be intuitive and patient. And even though it's just a simple example, writing this by hand from scratch might have taken days, but ChatGPT was able not only help you learn how to code, but in the end, with proper prompts, generate accurate results.